Hello from the World Economic Forum in Geneva. My name is Adrian Monk and I'll be moderating today's session. Welcome to this virtual meeting which has brought together leaders and stakeholders from across the global community for our COVID action platform. Today, this meeting serves as a launch pad for the next chapter, The Great Reset. We have contributions from His Royal Highness, the Prince of Wales, from UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres, from IMF Managing Director Kristalina Georgieva, and from many more in the next hour and a quarter. But to get us underway, let's hear from the forum's executive chairman and founder, Professor Klaus Schwab. Thank you, Adrian. It is obvious that we are in the midst of the most severe crisis the world has experienced since World War II. 75 years ago, countries and people came together to shape the post-war global order, which brought us decades of peace, increased global cooperation and prosperity to hundreds of millions of people around the world. The COVID-19 crisis has shown us that our old systems are not fit anymore for the 21st century. It has laid bare the fundamental lack of social cohesion, fairness, inclusion, and equality. Now is the historical moment, the time, not only to fight severe virus, but to shape the system for the need for the post-corona era. We have a choice to remain passive, which would lead to, an, to the amplification of many of the trends we see today. Polarization, nationalism, racism, and ultimately increased social unrest and conflicts. But we have another choice. We can build a new social contract particularly integrating the next generation. We can change our behavior to be in harmony with nature again. And we can make sure that the technologies of the fourth industrial revolution are best utilized to provide us with better lives. In short, we need a great reset. We have to mobilize all constituents of our global society to work together. We must not miss this unique window of opportunity. For this reason, I'm grateful that we are joined for this announcement of the Great Reset Initiative, not only by His Royal Highness, the Prince of Wales, but by representatives of international organizations, business, trade unions, scientists, and above all, the young generation. Now we have the very special message from the United Nations Secretary General, Antonio Guterres. Your Royal Highness, Professor Schwab, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, I send you my warmest greetings and best wishes on the launch of the Great Reset. The COVID-19 pandemic is causing enormous human suffering and economic hardship. A microscopic virus has closed down entire countries and economies. In doing so, it has exposed the fragility that characterizes much of our world. But this fragility is not confined to health systems. Runaway climate change, unsustainable levels of inequality, and the lawlessness of cyberspace are all warning signs that we must heed. The Great Reset is a welcome recognition that this human tragedy must be a wake-up call. As you rightly say, it is imperative that we reimagine, rebuild, redesign, reinvigorate, and rebalance our world. The scale of the pandemic and its social and economic impact demand strong unity and solidarity, particularly towards developing countries. Specific measures must be targeted at those most affected, women, older people, youth, low-wage workers, the informal sector, and people caught up in humanitarian crises. Rebalancing investment, harnessing science and technology, and advancing the transition to net zero emissions, all elements of the Great Reset are fundamental to building the future we need. We have already called for an economic stimulus package equivalent to a double digit percentage, more than 10% of the global economy. Last week, the United Nations, together with the governments of Jamaica and Canada, 
convened the largest gathering of world leaders since the start of the pandemic to lay solid foundations for a sustainable recovery based on the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and the Paris Agreement. We must build more equal, inclusive and sustainable economies and societies that are more resilient in the face of pandemics, climate change and the many other global challenges we face. As momentum builds for a fairer and more inclusive recovery, the Great Reset can help to enlarge the conversation and integrate the thinking into financial systems and global markets. Together, we can make faster progress as we work to end the COVID-19 pandemic and build a more stable, peaceful and prosperous world for all. Thank you. Secretary General for that contribution. Now I want to hand over to the President of PACT, Caroline Anstey, to host this part of our conversation. Caroline. Thank you, Adrian. Um, and let me say I'm, I'm honored and, and absolutely delighted to have this opportunity to invite His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales to give his perspectives on why this reset is, is so important. Let me just say, and I think I think we're all well aware His Royal Highness has spent the last, well, I've heard him say the last 30 years, I actually think it's more like the last 45 or 50 years, uh, dedicating his efforts to really putting people and planet at the center of global value creation. So I, it is a great honor, uh, Your Royal Highness, to hear from you now. And uh, let me, without further ado, hand over to you. Caroline, thank you very much indeed for, for your kind words. I, I think I have a feeling it's about 38 years now, probably, or something like that, that I've been trying. But um, there's a, these are unprecedented times. Every person on the planet has been impacted by the coronavirus pandemic. Our world came to a standstill and it became clear that we did not have the uh, answer or the mechanisms to address such an unprecedented global threat. The threats posed by this um, dreadful pandemic came upon us suddenly with very little warning. The threat of climate change has been more gradual, but uh, it's devastating reality for many people and their livelihoods around the world, and its ever greater potential to disrupt surpasses even that of COVID-19. In addition to COVID-19, over the last few decades, we have seen bird flu, swine flu, Ebola, MERS, SARS, which are all zoonotic diseases originating in animals. More than half of all pathogens affecting humans come from animals. Changing the relationship between wild, domestic, and human animals makes pandemics more likely, which is why we need to restore balance with the natural world through decisive action on climate change and restoring biodiversity. If, um, if we look at the planet as if uh, it were a patient, uh, we can see that our activities have been damaging her immune system and she has been struggling to function and thrive due to the strain we have put on her vital organs. To treat her, we need to restore balance and put nature back at the center of the circle. And to achieve this, we must act for health and well-being, understand nature's patterns and cycles, recognize the value of diversity, unity, and the interdependence of all living things, consider the importance of innovation and adaptation, and invest uh, in nature-based solutions to help stimulate a more circular bioeconomy that gives back to nature as much as we take from her. Now, I can only hope that as this current crisis passes, we are able to reflect on and shape the type of world we want for ourselves and for future generations. The 75 years after the Second World War saw unprecedented growth, rising longevity and poverty reduction. But all this put an overwhelming strain on our environment. The good news is that we have many of the solutions to hand. Renewable energy is now cheaper than fossil fuels. Our agriculture and land use can be more resilient, healthy and productive if we do not degrade our land 
destroy our forests and poison our water. Unfortunately, uh, we so often forget that we are profoundly dependent on nature for our lives and livelihood. So how do we balance the need to rebuild economic prosperity, the need to get people back to work against environmental concerns? Investing sustainably now can be a fast, efficient and attractive way to reboot our economy. Therefore, what should be the principles that underlie the reshaping of a new and better global economic system? To seize this uh, window of opportunity, I believe we need to do five things. First of all, to create momentum for the Great Reset, we need to capture the imagination and will of humanity. We will only change if we really want to change. Secondly, the global economic recovery must set us on a new trajectory of sustainable employment, of livelihoods and economic growth. To achieve scale, we must not be afraid to reorientate our long-standing incentive structures, which have been having such perverse effects on our planetary environment and on nature herself, if we are to reap the benefits afforded by a more sustainable world. Thirdly, we must redesign systems and pathways to advance net zero transitions globally. And in this regard, carbon pricing can form a critical pathway to genuinely sustainable markets. This reset moment is our opportunity to accelerate and align our efforts to create truly global momentum. Countries, industries, and businesses moving together can create efficiencies and econ economies of scale that will allow us to leapfrog our collective progress and accelerate our transition. Fourthly, we must reinvigorate science, technology, and innovation. This crisis has shown the importance of investing in science, technology, innovation. We are on the verge of catalytic breakthroughs that will alter our view of what is possible and profitable within the framework of a sustainable future. And fifthly, we must rebalance investment. Accelerating sustainable investment could offer significant economic growth and employment opportunities, including in green energy, the regeneration of nature and landscapes, the circular bioeconomy, ecotourism, and green public infrastructure. It is time, therefore, to align sustainable solutions with funding in a way that can transform the marketplace. This would be the most dramatic act of responsible leadership ever seen by the global private sector and would at once provide a catalytic incentive for the public sector to follow. We have a golden opportunity to seize something good from this crisis. Its unprecedented shockwaves may well make people more receptive to big visions of change and global crises like pandemics and climate change know no borders and highlight just how interdependent we are as one people sharing one planet. Over the past month or so, despite the ongoing crisis, I've been encouraged to see the growing calls for a green recovery. We, start, we need only look to the United Nations Secretary General, to the IMF, uh, the EU, the Petersburg Climate Dialogue, the Canadian government, the COP26 universities network, and business leaders around the world to see this. And as we move from rescue to recovery, therefore we have a unique but rapidly shrinking window of opportunity to learn lessons and reset ourselves on a more sustainable path. It is an opportunity we have never had before and may never have again. So we must use all the levers we have at our disposal knowing that each and every one of us has a vital role to play. Everything I have tried to do and urge over the past 50 years has been done with our children and grandchildren in mind. So I can only encourage us all to think big and act now. Thank you, Caroline.